Chindan. Now let's learn about the layers of the atmosphere. The first layer of the atmosphere is troposphere, second layer is stratosphere, third is mesosphere, fourth is thermosphere, and the last layer is the exosphere. Now let us learn in detail about the first layer that is troposphere. The lowermost layer of the atmosphere is troposphere, and the term troposphere literally means turnover. This layer extends from 8 kilometers over the poles and 18 kilometers over the equator. Children see that 8 kilometers near the poles, 18 kilometers over the equator. Why is this difference? Because the equator is warmer, air gets heated up on the planet's surface, causes convection currents to flow from the equator to the poles. So now you understood, this implies that warmer the weather, thicker is the troposphere. There is another reason to be discussed why the troposphere is thick near the equator children. Because you know that the earth is not a complete sphere. It is elliptical in shape. So the radius from the center of the earth to the poles is less when compared to the radius towards the equator. So the gravitational pull of the earth towards the equator is less when compared to the gravitational pull towards the poles. 80% of the atmosphere is found in this layer that is troposphere. It is very thick and it consists of most of the oxygen which is very essential for all the living beings on the earth. Children, you already know what is air pressure. The pressure exerted by the air on the surface of the earth is called air pressure or weight of air in simple words. Now closer to the earth, higher air pressure. Far away from the earth, less air pressure. So in this layer, air pressure is highest. And in this layer, air moves both vertically and horizontally. Children, the temperature in this layer, that is in the troposphere, decreases with increase in height above the mean sea level, roughly at a rate of 1 degree Celsius for every 165 meters of the ascent. This is called lapse rate. And do you know the reason why, children? Why is the temperature decreasing as you are going higher and higher. The reason is the troposphere gases absorb very little of the incoming solar radiation. Instead, the ground absorbs this radiation and then heats the tropospheric air by conduction and convection. The other reason which we can discuss also children is high up in the troposphere there will be thin air which absorb very little amounts of incoming solar radiation. Because of this, the temperature in the troposphere decreases with increase in the altitude. Children, now I would like to pose you a question. That is, if you go into the Earth's crust, like, will the temperature increase or decrease? Yes, you are right. The temperature increases. But you know, the temperature increases by around 3 degrees Celsius per 100 meters. You go down into the Earth's crust. Children, you may have a doubt that we can uh, reach the center of the earth. No, it's not possible because as you go deeper and deeper, it becomes too hotter and hotter. So we cannot reach the center of the earth. It is hot in the lower layers ranging from 20 degrees Celsius to 15 degrees Celsius, except in the polar regions. And children, in this layer, it gets cold near the top as low as minus 75 degrees Celsius. So water vapor gets condensed and form clouds. Thus troposphere is the home of clouds, lightning and other weather phenomena. Children, observe the diagram. You can see the tropopause, stratopause, mesopause and thermopause. What actual is a pause children? Pause is nothing but the boundaries between the layers of the atmosphere are known as pauses and the tropopause separates the troposphere and stratosphere. Let us see what are the special features of the pauses of the atmosphere. The answer to this question is maximum changes occur between the layers of the atmosphere at these pauses. You know what are the pauses already we have discussed. The reason is because the particles from the lower layer and the upper layer mix in these regions children. But there is no change in the temperature with increase in height in the pauses. 
so note this there will be no change in the temperature with increasing height width in the pauses now let's see what are jet streams children narrow bands of high speed winds that blow in the upper troposphere and the lower stratosphere are called jet streams and they cause massive weather changes and affect airline routes and paths of storms and these winds children uh, blow in the upper troposphere from west to east for thousands of kilometers and air often move in jet streams at a speed of greater than 200 kilometers per hour and jet stream form because of uneven heating on the earth's surface instead of flowing in a straight line jet stream loop north and south I mean they take meander shape looping up children now we are going to learn about the second layer that is called the stratosphere which is above the troposphere this layer extends up to a height of about 50 kilometers from the mean sea level children so please observe the picture so that you can clearly understand that it extends from about 50 kilometers from the mean sea level in this layer children air moves horizontally and almost free from all type of weather phenomena no clouds of very much clear thus jet planes fly in this layer in this layer the temperature increases with increase in altitude but in troposphere we have discussed the temperature decreases with increase in altitude now why is the temperature is increasing in the stratosphere the reason is that the direct heat source of the stratosphere is the sun a layer of ozone molecules absorb the solar radiation which heats the stratosphere that's the reason why the temperature is increasing in the stratosphere the stratopause separates the stratosphere and the mesosphere which you can very clearly see in the picture above children the lower part of the stratosphere has concentration of ozone o3 which protects the earth from the harmful ultraviolet rays of the sun now let us discuss more about the uv rays ultraviolet rays of the sun the sunlight that reaches us is made up of three types of rays children that is uva uvb and uvc the long wavelength rays are called uva and the short wavelength rays are called uvb and uvc and uva and uvb are the rays that harm our skin children please remember this uva and uvb are the rays that harm our skin uvc rays do not penetrate from the ozone so we need not worry about these rays children now we are going to learn about the mesosphere the mesosphere lies above the stratosphere it is the third and the coldest layer of the atmosphere it extends from about 50 kilometers to about 80 kilometers above the mean sea level the temperature decreases with increase in height and reaches to about minus 100 degrees celsius at about 80 kilometers children why is the temperature decreasing in the mesosphere children the reason is as you go higher in the mesosphere the air gets colder the air is much thinner mean less dense in the mesosphere than in the stratosphere below there are few air molecules to absorb the incoming electromagnetic radiation from the sun even carbon dioxide in the mesosphere also helps to make this layer cold children meteors which come from the outer space burn up in this layer means mesosphere children and when a meteor falls from the outer space upon reaching the atmosphere it burns up if some part is left the remaining part that falls down on the earth surface is called a meteorite and the metals present in some of the meteorites are iron and nickel so pause separates the mesosphere and the thermosphere children children now we are going to learn about the next layer that is called the thermosphere the thermosphere lies above the mesosphere and it is the fourth layer of the atmosphere it extends from about 80 kilometers to about 400 kilometers above the mean sea level children in this layer 
the temperature increases with increase in height even though the air is thin it absorbs so much of solar radiation that the temperatures can reach up to 1500 degrees celsius it has two more layers children that is ionosphere and the magnetosphere ionosphere has ionized molecules that reflects low frequency radio waves back to the earth and thus helps in long distance communication children the tv signals we receive are transmitted back to the earth by the communication satellites but without any satellites the low frequency radio waves are transmitted by the ionosphere is it it a great job done by the ionosphere you can see very clearly the process in the above picture charged particles in the magnetosphere are affected by the earth's magnetic field and create beautiful northern and southern lights called aurora these auroras occur in the thermosphere and exosphere children children do you know how are these natural lights auroras formed in the nature yeah when electrically charged particles from the sun collide with atmospheric oxygen and nitrogen these auroras are formed children and if they are formed near the north pole they are called the northern lights or aurora borealis if they are formed near the south pole they are called southern lights or aurora australis children watch this video to understand more clearly how the auroras are formed topic auroras huh why are auroras formed maybe because the earth forgets to switch off the lights <laughs> nah huh? let me explain Hmm. Our sun is a giant burning star. Hmm. It expels tons of solar wind into space. Solar huh? wind consists of super hot charged particles which are fatal. So, should we use a big umbrella to protect ourselves from these particles? No. Huh? The Earth's magnetic field ah. acts like a shield and protects us. Its field lines appear to emerge from the south pole and merge into the north pole. Hmm. Now, when the charged particles hit our magnetic field, most of them get deflected however some huh? of them flow along the earth's magnetic field lines to the poles and <laughs> reach our upper atmosphere hmm. here these particles collide with oxygen and nitrogen this causes them to give off various ah. colors of light which are called auroras <laughs> the thermopause separates the thermosphere and the exosphere children now we are going to learn about the last layer that is the exosphere the exosphere is the outermost or the uppermost layer of the atmosphere and it gradually merges into the space it is a very thin layer children and here the air pressure is the lowest in this layer it extends from the top of the thermosphere up to 10000 kilometers very light gases like hydrogen and helium are found in this layer children In this layer the temperature increases with height and may reach about 4500 degrees celsius spacecrafts and man-made satellites move in this layer beyond this exosphere children we have the vast empty space of the atmosphere if you travel out of the exosphere children you will be into the space where you can find the sun planets galaxies stars etc